Hi everyone, this is Joy with Create It With Joy. Today's project is a lawn fawn project, which I'm so super excited about. Um, I'm using the Magic Iris die and Dandy Day stamp and die set. I love lawn fawns interactive cards. I mean, I think they're the most fabulous things ever. Um, and this one, when I saw it on their, for their release, for this, for this spring, for this uh, release, I, could not wait to get my hands on this magic iris die because I knew number one it was going to be super easy to put together and it was going to be a super fantastic interactive card. So I'm starting off with an A2 size piece of cardstock and I am using their uh, new grassy hillside stencil. These things are pretty genius and I'm also using Wendy Vecchi's uh, 7x7 make art station and it's got the magnets. It's perfect for stenciling. So I've got the stencil laid down and I am going to be using some Distress Ink in Twisted Citron and I'm inking at the bottom but I will have the grass, you'll see as I move it away, it looks like a little hillside grass uh, piece which is fantastic. So I'm going to clean that off and I'm going to take another one because there's three in this grassy hillside stencil set, there's three. And so I just want to add a little bit of a hill at the bottom. And I'm just going to go in with a little bit darker green and I'm going to use mowed lawn and just go at the top, at the top part of where the grass blades would be to show that there is a difference between this bottom hill and the top hill. And then I'm going to take that twisted citron and blend out those two colors and you'll see as I pull it away. Now we've got two hills. Now the cool thing with this stencil is you line it up the other side it matches perfectly so now it's a mask. I took my top one lined that up so I don't get it on the top part as I'm masking it off to add a little bit of that mowed lawn distress ink to the top of the black uh, blades of grass. And now you've got this great super easy hillside background. Isn't that fantastic? I so so love these. Now I'm going to be doing the top part of this, so I will be putting that stencil back on like a mask, lining it up. Now I could have lined it up a little bit better, so there was a little bit of a white uh, edge around it, but that's just because I didn't line it up super great. It really didn't bother me on this card, but if you're a person that that would bother, pay attention to that. So I'm going to use Peacock Feathers and Mermaid Lagoon Distress Inks to blend out the sky. I wanted a really deep, uh, rich blue sky. So I laid down the Mermaid Lagoon and then I'm going to add the Peacock Feathers on top. Sorry you guys, I had a funny little um, string on my shirt and that drives me nutty. Every time I was moving my arm it was waving at me and I just wasn't in love with that. So I'm going to blend those two together till I get a nice, a nice smooth looking sky. And this paper gets nice and saturated and as it gets saturated it just makes it easier to blend. And this little make art station is so fantastic for this because everything is magneted down. Is that a word? Magneted? It is for today. Um, and look at how pretty that is. All done. So anyways, everything was held down by the magnet and um, so nothing really shifts around. It's really a fantastic product. So now I'm taking the images from Dandy Day, the stamp set. And I'm going to stamp those out using um, Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink because I will be doing some Copic coloring on this. And then I decided on the cute little um, dandelions. I am taping off the stems because I'm going to be using some clear ink, re-stamping the top parts of that, and adding some embossing powder. And I'm using a speckled embossing powder from Ranger. Um, it's the Flurries embossing powder and it adds a little bit of glitter and it's got these speckles in it so you just get a few of those speckles here and there and I just really thought it added a really nice touch even though it's a light touch to those dandelions it adds a little touch to it. So clear embossing powder on those. Here's the Flurries speckled embossing powder from Ranger and then I'm going to heat those up and we'll get a nice little melt on that. I'm just cleaning off anything that was sticking to the stem, even though I did tape it off, I couldn't get all the way up to the top. So just using a paintbrush to clean that off before I heat it through. And again, it's a very subtle touch, but when you look at it, there's it's 
really is super, super cute. So I like how that turned out. So now we're gonna be doing some coloring on these really cute little images. And like I said, I'll be using some Copic markers. First, I want to stamp some background images. I will be coloring one of these with Copic markers and it actually works out just fine because I'll be coloring a darker green over that green uh, grass. So I'm placing down where the magic iris um, is gonna be. And then I'm taking a larger dandelion and then a smaller dandelion and I am stamping that on the background because I do want this card to have dimension even though I'm gonna be coloring and die cutting some other critters that will be in the foreground. I wanted these to be in the background. So I'm gonna ink those up. I'm gonna use the same uh, intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp. And then I will use the same clear ink and speckled embossing powder or speckle embossing powder is what it's called to add some detail to those dandelions. Waited for that to dry. Make, I was making sure that my inked background was also dry so I didn't have uh, random embossing powder sticking to the back where I didn't want it. So again, here's that fun speckle embossing powder. And it just changes how that little dandelion looks. So in love with it. Again, cleaning off any extra that's around and then we'll heat that through. And look how great that is. So now I am gonna be stamping the little dandelion pieces all over the background of this, of this blue sky because I want it to feel like the whole sky is filled up with these. I'm gonna be using a clear embossing ink and then I will be using the same speckled flurries embossing powder. I will not be using a black ink because I want this to be um, kind of just very in the background, not standing out completely in your face but you could do it with black ink if that's the look that you wanted, but that's just not what I was going for this time. And at first I thought, I'm just going to use the Misty, and I'm like, that just doesn't make any sense. I can just use a acrylic block and stamp around everywhere. And I am just stamping these little singular guys. There's a couple of them, and they just all over the place. So it looks like the sky is just full of uh, little dandelion pieces. For all of us with nice green grass, it is a nightmare, but... For the card, it is really, really super cute. So I'm going to heat emboss that, and then we've got this really great, fun background. And as you can see, those come into life now once that embossing powder is getting melted. Okay, finally, on to coloring our images. Again, Copic markers. I am using, uh, for the greens, G09, 14, and 28. I have stamped a flower, well, a couple flowers, and the little leaves. And I'm just going back with those three colors. I lay down my lightest color, come in with my darker color, blend it out a little bit with my medium, and then go over it one more time with my lightest color. Um, I do this as much as needed to get the blending and the shading that I want. And I am doing that also on that stamped dandelion on the inked background. Because again, it was a lighter green and this darker green Copic marker is covering it just fine. So I am doing that, getting those images finished. Really, these images were really super easy to color. For this flower, I am going to be using Y02 and Y19. Blending those together a lighter and then a darker because it was a small image I only used two of the markers or excuse me two of the colors in that color family so for these cute little mice I did w1 three four five and seven because that little I'm assuming it's a mama holding the little baby I wanted those two to be two different colors otherwise they would just look like one like blob of mouse and I just didn't want that so the two bigger mice are using the darker colors and that little mouse, the little baby mouse, is the lighter gray. Again, doing the same thing of laying down a light color, adding some dark shadowing, blending that out a little bit with the medium color and then coming back over with the lightest color and getting everything blended and smoothed out together. 
I think these little mice are so sweet and so cute. You could have little brown mice, you could have little white mice. I think they're just darling. And this little guy that's hanging on to that little dandelion, oh my gosh, he's just so, so, so stinking cute. When I saw this stamp set, I definitely knew that this was one I was going to have to get because something about it is just really super sweet to me. Now I'm using R20 for the ears on these cute and the nose on these cute little mice. And I'm just going to finish up coloring that uh, little mama mouse up there. So R20 for the ears. Um, sometimes I use that for the cheeks. I did not on these guys. I will use a, a white gel pen for that. So I'm using the coordinating dies, lining those up. I'm going to run that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. And once all those images are die cut, we can get going on the magic iris part of this card. That's why this video is a little bit longer um, because we've got to put together this magic iris. And honestly, guys, it really is super, super easy. Um, when I was watching the Lawn Fawn video, um, Kelly was explaining it and I'm like, gosh, this is so easy. And I was so glad. <laughs> okay. So here we go with the magic iris die. Here is the uh, circle part. You're going to cut out three circles. And I just cut that out of white cardstock. We're going to start with the first one. And then here is this centerpiece. And Kelly calls it the flux capacitor. You're going to line that up in the center of that die cut circle. And you're going to run that through your die cut machine. Now that that's done, it's going to have three, three little spots that are cut out and three spots that are just um, like little perforated sections so you can see. So you can see those three slots cut out and then the three little spots and they're kind of like guides. Then I cut out three of these things that to me look like a balloon, but Lawn Fawn calls them sausages. And I cut that out of patterned paper, and that's the Dandy Day 6x6 six six paper pack. You're going to slide that little end piece into the hole in, and then you're going to put it in, and you're going to slide it down towards yourself or towards the bottom of that hole, if that makes sense. And you're going to go to the next one. You're going to put it in, slide it down. Really is super easy. You're going to put this third one in and slide it down. And then they will all line up and fit around that circle perfectly. So really super easy on that. Now on that sausage, it has little a little X on it. And you will be using um, some glue dots. They like the 3 8 3 18 of an inch glue dots. Um, and you're going to put one down on each one of those little X's, like the X marks the spot. So go all the way around on each one. There is three total because there is one on the end of each one of those little, we'll call them sausage balloons. I think it looks like a little balloon. They say it looks like a sausage. It could be both. So put that last one on there. I'm telling you guys, this is really super, super easy. And I slowed this down. It's a lot slower than I usually do just so it's easier to put together. You're going to take another circle. You're going to make sure your little balloons are all lined up nice and even around that circle. Hold them in place. You will take this other die cut circle and put it right over the top. And it will adhere down to those little, those three pieces of um, glue dots not pieces, three glue dots. So I'm making sure everything is lined up good. I'm going to stick that down, line it up, push it down, and now you've got that first part of your magic iris done. Okay, on to the next part. You're going to flip it over, and you can see those little tabs right there. And in the magic iris thing, you get this little die cut and you die cut out three tabs and it has on each end, it has like a little, I don't want to even call it a half circle. You're going to take your tape runner and from those little registration marks, you're going to pull out straight one 
one little, sorry, my phone was ringing, you guys, I apologize. A strip of glue straight out and then you will adhere that down. And because it has that little curve, you're lining it up with the inside curve of this magic iris die. So again, one strip of glue, line that curve up to the inside curve and adhere that down. Now you're gonna flip it back over. Well, we'll flip it over in a second, there we go. So now you want one of those tabs pointing at you. Here is this, this is the little handle to the magic iris die. It has the same curve, you're gonna line it up on the inside. It's also gonna line up next to that tab that's facing you to where the two sides meet, meet and it makes a V shape, if that makes sense. So see that little V right there that I'm pointing to? That's how you want that to look. You're going to take your third circle that you die cut, just lay it on top loosely. You're gonna add some adhesive to the end of those tabs and you're going to fold this over loosely. It will not reach all the way to the center. Now I will say for me, I had to open these back up and actually make it a little more secure only because it was kind of popping up a little bit. So if you have it a little not secure enough, it's gonna not be as flat as you would like if that would make sense. Now flip it over and those little tabs that were sticking out of the back, you're just gonna gently fold in. Now you're going to add some adhesive to those tabs that we glued down only to the tabs. Have your magic iris closed and line it up on your card how you want it to be when the magic iris is closed. So the tab is still on the card. And when we go to open it, the magic iris thing will slide down, but you need it to be in the closed position so that way it lines up perfectly and will fit in your envelope. Because when you give it to your recipient, you want to give it to them closed. Now that die that I was just showing you is the scalloped add-on and I cut that out um, out of the Dandy Day six by six paper pad. And here you can add the glue everywhere all over, just not on that tab. And then we will adhere that piece down. And now we're going to die cut the little arrow so, some, so your recipient knows that you're going to pull this down. And I was just laying out my cute little mice and deciding what uh, scene I want this to look like. So I'm gonna start gluing these little guys down. I'm using some foam tape behind some of them for some dimension and then other ones I'm just gluing directly to um, the back panel. The, that cute little guy floating in the air, it's like he's flying off hanging onto this and his little best friend at the bottom is blowing on his dandelion and that's what's flying in the air everywhere when we inked up the background. I like my cards to tell stories most of the time. So this is my story I tell myself. I'm going to adhere the rest of these images down. Some of the flowers will be popped up, some of them won't. Uh, something I did not do on camera was add the uh, a second sentiment to the bottom, but in the pictures you will see it. Um, but I will show you how I did the sentiment in the center of this uh, magic iris die. When you cut out both the regular circle and the scallop circle, it leaves a little center circle. And I did some uh, heat embossing on that and some uh, stamping of the cute little dandelion pieces on that as well. And then you can just tuck it in and glue it down. Uh, it actually is really, really super easy. So I'm tucking these images in and around each other. I did ink up that white circle um, because I want that to look the same as the sky. So I inked that up with the same ink and then I'm gonna be stamping, I think you're dandy. And I'm just masking it off because it's a long sentiment and I'm masking it off so I can do it uh, one on top of the other. You also could cut apart your stamp if you want to, but if that gives you a heart attack and <laughs> you just can't do it, then just mask it off. Make sure you pull off that paper before you stamp it and that works just as well. So I'm using some white uh, embossing powder and that's from Ranger. And I'm using Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink, Clear Embossing Ink. And so here I stamped the words, I think. Again, white embossing powder, heating that through. And then I will be stamping in black um, the little dandelion pieces. And that stands out different than the background that's kind of the clear uh, dandelion pieces, if that makes sense. 
So all these little tiny uh, differences really, I think, add up to make a really interesting card. So here are those cute little pieces. And when this all gets lined up, you'll see how it works with the little guy blowing at the bottom. So I put some adhesive down and now I'm going to tuck this circle in and I'm actually going to, you can kind of lift pieces up because it's only glued in, in like three spots on the back. And I'm using my Spellbinders tool in one just to make sure everything's tucked in. And here we go with the magic iris at one little piece. But then I realized it wasn't straight. <laughs> so I had to lift it up and move it around. But as you guys can see, that's really, really super easy. But how cute is that? So I'm taking a black glaze pen, adding it to all my little critters eyes because that makes a huge difference on um, how they how their face comes alive. Adding some white pen detail to their cheeks with little freckles and to the flowers. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, gray below them for a little bit of shadow to give a little more 3D effect. And you can see that open spot on the bottom. That's where I'm gonna put the next, the last sentiment that says, and I'm not lion in parentheses. Um, I don't know why I forgot to put it on in the video, but I did, but it is in the picture so you guys will be able to see it. So now here is the finished card. Isn't that cute? It says, I think you're dandy. And doesn't that open up fantastic? I love these little critters. I love the background. It feels very spring-like. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and share with your crafty friends. I hope this has inspired you to create something wonderful. I do have some affiliate links below. It really doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me to continue making these videos. So thank you so much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.